need him to speak to us. We have much to learn and much to hear. We have so many things we need to understand a little better. We're going to be studying in the book of Deuteronomy for the next several weeks. It's the January Bible study. Some of you may remember they used to have that all the time, and, and we kind of got away from it a little bit, but um, I thought it would be a good time to kind of do it this way. So we're going to be studying in Deuteronomy, and so we're going to begin in chapter 1, and I'm going to read chapter 1. I'm going to read it out of the message just because I think it kind of comes alive a little bit more. You may have a different version. That's fine. Uh, this just kind of speaks a little bit more to us. So I'm going to read the whole first chapter. So these are the sermons Moses preached to all of Israel when they were in the east of Jordan River in the Arabah wilderness, opposite Suf and the vicinity of Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizhal. It takes 11 days to travel from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea, following the Mount Seir route. It was on the first day of the 11th month of the 40th year when uh, Moses addressed the people of Israel telling them everything God had commanded him concerning them. This came after he had defeated Sihon, king of Amorites, who ruled from Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who ruled from Ashtoroth to Adraz. It is east of the Jordan in the land of Moab that Moses set out to explain this revelation. Back in Horeb, God, our God, spoke to us. You've stayed long enough at this mountain. On your way now, get moving. Head for the Amorite hills whereof people are living in the Arabah, the mountains of the foothills, the ne Negev, the seashore, the Canaanite country and the Lebanon of all the way to the big river, the Euphrates. Look, I've given you this land. Now go in and take it. It's the land God promised to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their children after them. At that time I told you, I can't do this, can't carry you all by myself. God, your God, has multiplied your numbers. Why, look at you. The, they rival the stars of the sky. And may God, the God of your fathers, keep it up and multiply you another thousand times. Bless you, just as he promised. But how can I carry all this by myself, your troubles and burdens and quarrels? So select some wise, understanding, and seasoned men from the tribes, and I will commission them as your leaders. You answer me, good, a great solution. So I went ahead and took the top men of your tribes, wise and seasoned, and made them your leaders. Leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, of tens. Officials adequate for each of your tribes. At the same time, I gave orders to your judges. Listen carefully to complaints and accusations uh, between your fellow Israelites. Judge fairly between each person and his fellow foreigner. Or foreigner. Don't play favorites. Treat the little and the big alike. Listen carefully to each. Don't be impressed by big names. This is God's judgment you're dealing with. Hard cases you can bring to me, I'll deal with them. I issued orders to you at the time regarding everything you would have, have to deal with. Then we set out from Horeb and headed to the Amorite Hill Country. Going through that, a huge and frightening wilderness that you were had more than I full of by now. All under the command of God our God. And finally arrived at Kadesh Barnea. There I told you, you've made it to the Amorite hill country that God our God is giving us. Look, God, your God, has placed this land as a gift before you. Go ahead and take it now. God, the God of your fathers, promised it to you. Don't be afraid. Don't lose heart. But then you came to me and said, let's send some men all out ahead to scout out the land. For us and bring back a report of the best route to take and the kinds of towns we can expect to find. That seemed like a good idea to me, so I picked 12 men, one from each tribe. They set out climbing through the hills. They came to the Eskal Valley and looked it over. They took samples of the produce of the land and brought them back to us saying, it's good land that God our God is giving us. But then you weren't willing to go for it. Go up. You rebelled against God. You're, you're God's plain word. You complained in your tents. God hates us. He hauled us out of Egypt in order to dump us among the Amorites. A death sentence for sure. How can we go up? We're trapped in the dead end. Our brothers took all the wind out of our sails, telling us the people are bigger and stronger than us, than we are. Their cities are huge. Their defenses are massive. We even saw Anakite giants there. I tried to relieve your fears. Don't be terrified of them. God, your God, is leading the way. He's fighting for you. You saw with your own eyes what he did for you in Egypt. 
You saw what he did in the wilderness, how God your God carried you as a father carries his child, carried you the whole way until you arrived there. But now you're here. You won't trust God. Your God, this same God who goes ahead of you in your travel to scout out a place to pitch camp, a fire by night, a cloud by day to show you the way. When God heard what you said, he exploded in anger. He swore not a single person of this evil generation is going to get so much as a look at the land that I promised to give you, your parents. Not one, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He'll see it. I'll give him and his descendants the land he walked out because he was all for following God, heart and soul. But I also got it because of God's anger spilled over onto me. He said, you aren't getting it in either. Your assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, will go in, build up his courage. He's the one who will claim the inheritance for Israel. And your babies of whom you said, they'll be grabbed for plunder. All these little kids who right now don't even know right from wrong, they'll get in. I'll give it to them. Yes, they'll be the new owners, but not you. Turn around and head back to the wilderness following the route of the Red Sea. You'll, he, you spoke up. We've sinned against God. We'll go up and fight, following all his orders that God, our God, has commanded. You took your weapons and dressed for battle. You thought it would be so easy going in, into those hills. But God told me, don't let them. Don't do it. Don't go up and fight. I'm not with you this time. Your enemies will waste you. I told you, but you wouldn't listen. You rebelled at the plain word of God. You threw out your chest and strutted into the hills. And those Amorites who had lived in the hills all their lives swarmed all over you like a hive of bees, chasing you from Seir all the way to Horma and stinging defeat. You came back and wept in the presence of God, but it did, he didn't pay a bit of attention to you. God didn't give you the time of day. You stayed there at Kadesh a long time, about as long as you had stayed there earlier. Wow, I know that was a lot. But we look at this and we've got to think about a few things. Number one, Moses wrote Deuteronomy. Now, it's an inspired word of God. We know that God gave him the words to say. There's probably some people that kind of helped out as far as writing about his death. Obviously, Moses could not write about his death. So they have prophets, people that help, scribes that help with that. But Moses wrote this. So he's telling them, basically recapping what they had already knew, what had happened. Now, I want you to look at this. We have a generous God. He offers them the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. He told them, it's yours, go for it. He said, I will go before you and take care of it. But then what did they do? They do the same thing we do. Well, Lord, your plan's good, but I've got a plan. And, and what I think we ought to do is send some scouts ahead and check it out. Lack of trust, isn't it? He knew this was important. They knew this was the promised land. They knew this was for them. But they didn't trust God to take care of it. So they said, we'll just kind of sneak a peek so we'll know what strategy to use. Y'all ever use that? You know, in your life, you, you've been given a plan by God. You know that's what God wanted you to do. You had it in your head. That's right. And then, instead of going for that plan, you decide, well, let me, let me test the waters over here first to make sure that's what God really wanted me to do. I guess none of you did that. I did. I thought, well, maybe I have this plan. I'll take care of it on my own. And, and if... I go, this direction would be great. I know God really is trying to lead me this way, but I think this way is not bad. We watched the movie Mom's Night Out last night. I don't know how many of you have seen it or not, but she was one of those planners. They had a plan for a Mom's Night Out. The three ladies were going to go out, have dinner, and have a nice time with no children, and making noise, and, and quiet evening of a wonderful dinner. But things didn't turn out like she had planned. And it got really crazy. You'll have to watch the movie to see how crazy it really got. But isn't that us? We have our life planned out. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's going to go this way. I know exactly how it's going to go. And then it doesn't go that way. And we wonder why. 
the Israelites had it planned out. They were going to go into the promised land. But then they peeked over and what happened? They saw those big fortified cities and giants in the land. And they were afraid. Has fear gotten in the way of your plan? You know, the plan God had for you? Many older folks, as I talk to them, they say, yes, I know God was leading me in a certain direction, but I couldn't go that way. I just wouldn't do it. And it took them years and years to finally get into the will of God and into the plan that God really had for them. And they missed all those years of their youth, much like the children of Israel. All those didn't even get to go into the promised land. This generous God had given them all that, but he had a plan that he wanted them to follow, but they had a better way. Isn't that arrogant us? We have a better way. God, you don't get it. You don't live in this world we live in. You don't understand and it's funny after they said no and God said okay then you don't get to go in they started backpedaling you ever done that you ever watch your children do that oh I, well you just didn't understand what I was saying I didn't mean it that way I know, I know you'll be with us so yeah we'll go too late no, you won't. But, but, but God, you'll go with us, so what? we'll do it. So you try to do it on your own. Doesn't work out so well, does it? Try to do it on your own strength. Try to do it in your own power. What happens? The Amorites crushed them. Like bees, they say, just swarmed around them. Like, ugh. Ever gotten caught in a hive of bees? It's not a pleasant experience. It's amazing to me that we think we have a better way than God, your God. You notice how many times he said that? The God, your God. Not just some God out there. Not just some God that we don't understand. You're a God. The one you worship. The one who watches out for you. He has the plan. We just have to trust him to go through with it. And when we don't trust him, there's consequences to pay. Many of you are sitting in the chairs here this morning going I paid those consequences I've not gotten God's perfect will for my life a few times and I got to wander in the wilderness for however many years those Israelites got to wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they had a better way and many of them did not get to reap the reward of the promised land. Now you notice two did. And if you don't know the story why those two did, those were the two of the 12 spies that came back saying, we can do this. This is no problem. God, our God, our God will go before us and we won't have any trouble. The other 10 were saying, those giants were too big. Those people were not, ooh, they were scary. What was your promised land? What are your giants? What are your obstacles today? Why won't you follow God's plan today? You see, God's character is strong, and that's this first section is all about God's character. He says what he means and he means what he says and in these days and times we don't see that much I've watched 
as we think that what somebody tells us we have to do, well, they don't really mean that. Or when we read God's Word and He tells us to do a certain thing, to behave a certain way, to act a certain way, we say, well, but He doesn't mean it really that way. That's not exactly right. I mean, surely not. I think we talked in the Ben's Bible study about the number of people that don't believe that there's a hell. 30% believe that there's a hell. Most, the other 70% of people don't believe there is one. 80%, 70%, 80% believe that there's a, a heaven. Maybe even 90%, it was a huge number. Believe that there's a heaven. Almost everybody believes they're going. But they don't know the rules. They don't know how to get there. They don't know what God really says about it. They just know that, well, God's good. I'm going to heaven. I'm good. I'm going to heaven. Well, I don't think he says that. He says we have to have a belief in Jesus Christ. We have. He is the way. The only way. But see, we don't really buy that because, oh, God wouldn't do that. He wouldn't really let that happen. No, ask the Israelites. What happened to them? Oh, they didn't get into the promised land. Oh, wait a minute. We, we, didn't, we didn't know exactly what you meant. Well, I told you to take it. You said no. Where are you headed? What have you done? How is God speaking to you? What is your, his plan for you? How are you going to get there? Do you trust him? Or do you think, well, he just doesn't know my circumstances. He, do, he, do, he doesn't know what I've been through. He doesn't understand this world we're in today. Has he seen the news? We question all those things, don't we? We all do. I do. Lord, I, are you sure you're there? Are you sure you will get this? There's giants out there. They're swishing Christians. They're, they're just doing all this stuff against us. Islam's taking over. And, and you're letting it happen. Oh, really? Was that his plan? I think he told us that we are supposed to get out there, let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, he meant the preachers are supposed to get out there and tell them that Jesus, the, the, those, those, uh, those deacons, they, they, yeah, they're the ones. Uh, uh, those Sunday school teachers, they're the ones, they're supposed to do it. He didn't really mean all of us. Now, now that would be uncomfortable. A giant might come. An obstacle might come and I might trip up. They'll ask me a question I don't have an answer to. Well, if that was a criteria, I'd be sunk a long time ago because I get questions asked me all the time I don't have answers to. I can look at his word and find them usually. But off the top of my head, not so much. His brain does not remember what it used to. I'm not sure it ever did a lot, but now it's really tough. Calling that, what, what was that name? What was that thing? What was that verse? It's in there somewhere, I know. What it really boils down to, you know, is trust. Do we trust God to really take care of us? Therein is the real issue, isn't it? So we know God has a plan. We know there's consequences that we don't follow a plan, but yet we try to tell him our plan, and we want him to go with our way, but yet we don't, and what happens? We lose years and years wandering in the wilderness. How much longer are we going to wander? How much longer are you going to wander? How much longer are we going to just say, no, I don't like your plan, I want my own plan? There's the question. 
it's time to give up. Say, Lord, these obstacles are big, but you're bigger. God, I'm afraid, but if you're with me, I can do this. Lord, I love you enough to take that step of faith. What are you going to do? It took the Israelites a while. They did get the promised land. The reward is great. Life with Christ is amazing. It really is. And if you've experienced that, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, oh, I want you to. We need that presence in our lives. Because the consequences are great, but so are the rewards. And he provides. Even when we're out of his will, he still provided, didn't he? He watched after them, even though they weren't 100% in his will. Don't let the giants take over. Don't let your fears rule you. Don't let others hinder you from following his plan. His way is best. And if we'll follow it, he will show us how to get through it, even when we don't see a way. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you to show us. We ask you to give us strength. And Lord, we want to trust you. And we struggle. But you, almighty God, are in our lives and you love us. And you have shown us a better way. Let us follow it and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is our time of invitation. We invite you to come. If you do not know this Savior that we talk about, this is a great time to come and ask questions. Let us find answers for you and help you with that decision. If you'd like to unite with Rosemont, we would love to have you as part of our body of believers. It's a wonderful group to be a part of.